In every church and in every ministry, there are two things that are in constant competition with one another. Your church's mission and your church's methods. And if you don't know how to tell the difference between those two things, then you're in for some frustrating days and your church is going to be less effective in sharing the message of Jesus and loving its neighbors than it could be. So today we're going to start a conversation about the difference between mission and method. And I think it's going to help you out a lot. And I'm ready to go. I hope you are too. Because the first ever episode of the Church Helper podcast starts right now. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Church Helper podcast. Our mission here at Church Helper is to help churches make every decision on purpose. My name is Mike, and I'm excited to help you and your church today. So let's just get into it. And the only place to start is here. If there's one thing that every ministry or lay leader in your church needs to understand, it's really the difference between mission and method. Mission and method is something almost every church wrestles with all the time, and it's one of the main reasons that so many churches are struggling to keep their doors open. Because understanding the mission of your church needs to be at the foundation of everything that you do. So for the next few episodes of this podcast, that's what we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about it a lot. And before we start, let's just define those two terms, mission and method. And we'll start with mission. So simply put, your mission is your purpose. It's the reason your church exists. It's what your church is called to do by God and led to do by the Holy Spirit. And so your methods are the way you accomplish your mission. The programs, the tasks, the meetings, all that stuff, that's the methods. That's the work of the mission. And so a mission always needs to come before a method. And I'm going to say that one more time because it's so important. Your mission always needs to come before your methods because methods really only ever matter when they're attached to a mission or a purpose. Now, practically, this means that you shouldn't have methods at all without a clear understanding of your mission first. And this is where so many churches today are getting stuck. So here's a quick example. Think about it like you're buying groceries, okay? The mission is that you need food. And the method is how you get the food you need. Will you order online or will you go to the store yourself? Which car will you take? Will you pack bags from home or will you get the bags at the store? Or more importantly, what store are you even going to go to, right? All of these are method decisions. And the determining factor is the answer to the question, how am I going to get the food that I need, right? Sometimes there's only one method, right? So if you live in a small town like me with one grocery store, then your choice is kind of made. But sometimes there's 10 methods and you need to decide which one is best. And no matter what you decide, every method starts with a mission. Because without a mission, there would be really no need for you to have a method at all. Now, biblically, we have a couple of missions that I think everybody should know about, right? In Matthew 22, Jesus gets into a conversation with some religious leaders about the greatest commandment of God. And when he's questioned, he gives the answer, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And when he taught us this, Jesus gave people a mission. But you'll notice that he left the method out. Jesus doesn't say love your neighbor by making them dinner once a week. He says love your neighbor. And Jesus knows that loving your neighbor is going to look a little bit different every day. And 2,000 years later, we hold firm to the mission that Jesus gave us. Love God and love your neighbor. Later, just before his ascension into heaven, Jesus sits with his disciples and gives them what we know as the Great Commission. He says in Matthew 28, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Go spread the good news. Go make disciples. That's what you're commanded to do. Again, Jesus gives the mission, but not all the methods. And I think we're probably thankful for that because the methods of preaching the good news have changed and language has changed and media has changed, but the mission is consistent, right? Go make disciples, baptize them and obey my commands. And I think that if we can get this right, we can hold tight to that mission that God can inspire us with creative methods 
to see transformation and growth and new life in our churches. So I know what you're thinking. This is obvious, yeah? So why am I talking about it? Well, it's because many churches are still struggling to differentiate between mission and method, right? Sometimes even the two are in conflict. Churches are struggling because they know how they like things, how they prefer to have them done or they have a past tradition. They want a particular worship style or liturgy or decor or message length or Bible translation or communion style, whatever it is, you can name it. We all have methods of doing church that we prefer over others. The how is comfortable to us. And that's not a problem until we start making important mission decisions based on our comfort and our preference. It's like if you got used to buying your groceries at Walmart and then Walmart announced that they were no longer in the grocery business, but determined you continue to shop there each week for your groceries because it's what made you feel comfortable. You like the aisles, you know the cashier, you always park in the same spot, you know how to get there. And you could continue to shop there every week, but you wouldn't be meeting your mission anymore because they no longer had food. So unless you chose to find a new place to shop for your groceries, eventually you would start to starve. And the same can be said when it comes to our church. Churches that hold tight to their methods without paying attention to their mission are eventually going to find themselves hungry and unhealthy. Now in the grocery example, after a few days, you would be forced to refocus on your mission because your stomach would be screaming at you. But in the church world, it doesn't always work that way. Often churches are moving away or drifting away from their mission long before anybody even starts to notice. And that's why understanding the difference between mission and method is the foundation for every decision a church needs to make. And this includes everything from bazaars and bake sales to preaching topics and your family ministry programming. So if you're unsure how to tell if your church is mission focused or method focused, that's okay, that's why we're here. We're here to help your church make every decision on purpose. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or the podcast, whatever you're listening on, because we're gonna be doing a lot of talking about mission and method and everything in between. And I'm excited for you to come along for the ride too. Hey, if you ever want to engage or ask any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. Head over to churchhelper.ca slash get help today and we'll set up a time to chat. And if there's somebody in your life that you think should hear this information today, but they're not really a podcaster or a YouTuber, then I've got you covered. Just head over to our website again, churchhelper.ca slash podcast for a printable transcript of today's episode. Thanks so much for engaging with and listening to the Church Helper Podcast. My prayer for you and your church is that you'll make every decision on purpose today. We'll talk to you again really soon.